Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, here we're going to talk all about saw milling, saw milling basics, what is, what is rough lumber, um, what you can use it for, what you can build with it, and why you want to use rough lumber in your projects versus buying a store-bought product. Um, saw milling has become increasingly popular in the last number of years. Um, due to the availability of small band sawmills for hobby use. As well as that, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, as this is July of 2021, lumber prices have skyrocketed and it is more affordable to mill your own lumber if you have an acreage. So this channel is going to be all about that. And just different things and ways you can use your lumber and just information for people so they don't, so they know what they're doing. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about what is rough lumber um, versus regular, what versus store-bought kiln-dried lumber. We're talking about live edge lumber and its uses versus dimensional lumber. So in its basic form, rough lumber is... It can't, it, it's lumber that comes off the sawmill with no further processing. You turn a log into boards. Um, the boards are typically full dimension of what you're trying to saw, though some people will do custom sawing, and I, I myself do as well. So in the case of a rough sawn 2x4 is exactly two, 2 inches wide by 4 inches wide. The reason it's called rough lumber and why the dimensions are full dimensions is uh, store-bought kiln-dried lumber is milled at those dimensions and then further processed to be smooth, but you, they typically take a quarter inch off all sides to plane the board smooth. So you have to start with a thicker diameter to end up with the, the smaller ones it's planed. So most typically when you say rough lumber, it's full dimension. Um, full dimension lumber can be used the same as regular dimension lumber or store-bought kiln-dried lumber, uh, similar applications. Uh, kiln-dried lumber can be rough lumber as well, but it has been processed through a kiln of some sort, whether it be a solar kiln or a uh, heat heated kiln, like many commercial units, or even a vacuum kiln, which is a new, relatively new invention that's great for uh, live edge and it's brought down to a moisture content of eight percent or less and that makes it stable and suitable for using in buildings not to say that rough lumber can't be used in buildings but as it is the moisture content of the tree when it was cut it does take longer to dry out live edge lumber and that's what's behind me in this storage shed of mine still has the bark on it it still has the natural it's sawn in a way that still has the natural edges of the trees so example here this piece of maple this was this is one inch thick so it's true thickness but you can see all the bark edges across the bark edges and the shape of the tree as it was cut live edge lumber is Quite usable for uh, epoxy projects. They've really taken off in the last couple years, and just different projects that where the live edge is desirable. Um, also, many woodworkers will buy live edge lumber because they know they know what they're getting. They're they're not they're able to pick and choose the products from within the wood. Um, someone who does fine fine woodworking of cabinetry or tables may choose live edge boards and pick certain sections of the the board for certain aspects of their project for the grain grain direction or stability of the wood um, so there's the advantage of that a lot of times you see live edge lumber being used for its live edge in the case of uh, benches with a live edge or a lot of people will take a live edge slab cut it in half flip it inside out so that the live edge is in the center and they'll fill the void with the epoxy. That's a very common product nowadays for DIYers and commercial aspects. 
So sawing your own lumber allows you to have access to all that at a fraction of the cost. Um, especially if you have your own acreage. But you don't have to have your own acreage to get these, to mill your own lumber. Um, very often, if you have a sawmill, you will have friends that have acreage, have trees on their property that could cut down for whatever reason, insect damage, shade problems, overgrowth, death. And you can use those boards that come off those trees for different things, or even just to sell them and make money. Um, live Lumber in general is a very lucrative uh, adventure in business, no matter what you're selling. I've sold most, I've sold to both dimensional lumber and live edge quite successfully over the years. So where can you use, where can you use rough lumber? Rough lumber can be used just about anywhere. Anywhere that you would use a standard spruce, fir, pine board, you can use rough lumber. A good example is behind me, the storage shed. This was made out of entirely rough lumber materials. There is no purchased boards in this. The, the uprights, it's a posts and beams sort of construction where these are four inches, true four inches in both directions. Then it's two by fours holding the long lengths up and the edge supports are two by fours. The sides are, are three quarter inch live edge boards for a live edge board and batten. There's a three quarter by eight fascia board. And the only thing I had to purchase for this was the roofing. Um, as of 2021 prices for lumber, this probably would have cost me six hundred dollars to build using standard spruce lumber um, plus the roof uh, i have a product called andora on the roof it cost me 125 dollars for the roof and the screws and that's it. it cost me nothing else to build this so depending on your situation of where you have access to logs you can build things relatively cheaply for a pro for a structure like this using rough wet lumber is fine because it will dry together um, that is a problem of rough lumber is that it's the moisture content in it will cause some checking and twisting and cracks uh, checking is your boards um, is different uh, layers of your board cracking and coming apart uh, twists and cracks happen depending on how your tree grew so rough lumber does pose some issues there. So you may not choose to use it for a fine project, but for any other project, it, it is very usable. Um, so using, using boards versus live edge is dependent on your project as well. In this case, I've used both. I have dimensional boards for the framework and then live edge board and batten siding for the sides you can mix and match what you do when you're doing live edge uh, when you're doing rough lumber um, same with your dimensions you don't have to mill it two by four you can go inch and a half by three and a half which is what a standard store bought two by four is and depending on what size your tree is that may save you some boards out of the out of the log you may get an extra couple boards out of your log versus going two by four most commonly for rough lumber, though, you do mill it at the full dimension that it is intended for. Live edge lumber for projects, as I mentioned, for what they can be used for. Um, typically, you do have you do want to let them dry out. Um, this is the purpose of the shed behind me is to allow live edge to dry while it's awaiting further processing. Um, outdoors, you're not going to get lumber down any lower than 12% typically, and it usually takes up to a year per inch of thickness. So a two inch thick board will take up two, two years to dry. So be wary of some misconceptions that drying your lumber comes fast.